Hey guys, um, just kind of want to talk today. Uh, I may throw a few scriptures in here. I really don't have any in particular, but anyhow, it's about storms. Um, and not running from the storm, but heading straight into it. So, um, we don't get them, storms in life. Things kind of don't go our way. Sometimes it's, you know, really, really, really bad ones. Sometimes it's just things. But I was a kid and we had a houseboat on the Minis on, in Minnesota, the Mississippi River, and we were on a vacation. And it's one part of the river, I don't even know what's called. I'd have to look it up. Sorry, I didn't. But the Mississippi just widens out a lot. Like a lot, almost like a lake. I think it even is called a lake. But it's really, 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 you know, just great expanse of water. <clears throat> and uh, we had just left this port, a marina, that's what they call them, port. The, uh, and we were maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes out. We weren't from very far. And it started raining. And then it started really storming, really, really, really bad. Well, we were heading into this lake, into the big expanse of this lake. And there wasn't any, you know, thing coming up for a while. Um, I think on a normal day, it would probably would have been an hour, you know, an hour, hour long journey, you know, to get to the next um, harbor, marina, whatever you want to call it, port. Um, so... Mom started panicking, you know, and one my mom, you know, I mean, she was just kind of panicking. She's like, the waves really, and this was the Mississippi, but they were, you know, four foot high swells. They were pretty, it was pretty choppy too, real choppy, you know, it was just, man, it was getting really treacherous and dark. And, um, I don't know if you ever, you know, being up in Minnesota, but they have some really, really awesome thunderstorms, rainstorms, and this was just a pretty violent storm because it's where the, Arctic air meets the southern air a lot of times, and it just, this collision of just climatic collision, and this was one of them. So, but my dad had been in the Navy, he turned Korea, and he just, he was kind of laser focused on just heading right into it. But my mom kept panicking, and she was just got to where she was even screaming at him, you know, but she wasn't screaming at him because she was mad, kind of a little bit, but she was panicking, and there's nothing wrong with that, I mean, um, she didn't know, she was kind of fearful, so my dad just kind of finally had enough of listening to her and just jerked the boat, and she kept telling him to turn around, turn around, turn around, head back, go back, go back, go back, my dad was like, you know, pretty, pretty adamant, and now we're going to head straight into this, this is where the safety is. <laughs> As soon as he turned, the waves hit the side of the boat, and I was down in the in the galley in the kitchen area, below where they where they were steering the boat from. <laughs> there was a window there, and I remember I was just a kid. I remember, man, we're going over, we're going down, and there there was no swimming back, guys. We were way way out there. We was going to rescue us, a storming, and I mean, even if we were good swimmers, it was gee, you know, it was we were dead meat. And I remember looking out this window and the water was like inches away from it. Like, man, we are going down. So we didn't. My dad instantly swung the boat back in, headed in the storm. My mom got wide eyed and she just shut up because she saw we almost capsized. And then my dad was right. It was like a two-hour journey, guys. It was a long journey because the waves and the wind were so strong that that one-hour journey almost doubled because of the headwinds. But anyhow, what that's why the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Trust Him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And he'll direct your paths. So, when Ed knew there was safety by heading into the storm, Possibly from his training from the Navy, he just he just knew. So it's where the scriptures come in too.
Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Rest. He wants us to come to the cross and then go through the cross. Coming to the cross is not going to cut it, guys. Because you can come to the cross, repent, lay your sins down, and lots of times you just lay them down, you can come back later on and pick them back up. When you go through the cross, you cover under the blood of the Lamb, and they changed, and you've changed. You don't want to pick them back up. So don't go halfway, guys. Head into the storm. If there's a storm you're facing, man, hit it. Hit it straight on. My wife posted this thing, and, it, and there's a long, long... I'm going to post this one day, but it said fate. It says you're not going to make it through the storm, but the warrior in you says I am the storm. So we just need to just realize things come up, but there's always a reason for it. And we need to just follow the leading of the Lord. I put out there about the storms coming to America. For a reason, guys. It's not just, it's not just, I'm not immune from it, actually. I'm going to tell you that I'm not how I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not saying, oh, there's a storm coming and you can tear up your house and not mine. <clears throat> I'm not prophesying doom and gloom or none of that. I'm saying this storm is coming to separate the wheat from the chaff, the men from the boys, kind of. Real, where the rubber meets the road. And it's for all of us guys. Could start with this country because he wants his country back because he wants us to be the light to the world, the, the land that he had already created to be a blessed nation. We just let it get out of control. Us as, us as Christians, us as the body, by not speaking, by not fasting, by not praying, by not just uh, everything and let everything go. No more. Time to rise and shine. That's why a lot of my messages are. But the, back to the storm. So, <clears throat> put out the date, 8-11-2020 eight, eight, to 9-11-2020. But I had the dream 8-6 eight, of 19-2019. Eight, of and when I had, I started panicking when I woke up and just look at it. Storm coming to America. And then, but then it's all about idols. And he's breaking down the idol piece of it. And there's more to it. There's a lot more idols that are going to come out over the next few months that I'm going to bring out. Because <clears throat> that's what the theme that he wants me to get. We've got we to gotta knock them down. Take them out. Get rid of them. Because it's what's destroying this country. It's destroying you guys. It's destroying us. But so I panicked. Eight. 8, 6, 19, what do I do, God? Do I warn people? Because it was not a very good dream. But through a period of progression, he said it wasn't going to destroy this country, but it was going to separate us. It was going to make us turn. It was going to bring us to our knees. Us. I don't get to pass go, God. It's not Monopoly. I don't get 200 bucks. and get to go lane and buy, buy Park Place. Well, you guys have to buy a reading railroad or whatever it is. If you play Monopoly, you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> and when he told me the date, he said, but the storm was going to hit me and my, my wife, our house first. And eight, nine, ten, maybe, eight, you know, a couple days before, still there's some storms. There's kind of, some of them seem like they're in free fall, nowhere to land. Yet, that's okay, because I know he's able. I'm not, it doesn't even, I'm not worried about it. Yes, I want to get to the safety side of it. I want to get through this, and I want it to be, you know, over with. <laughs> but I know who's in charge. So, I mean, all hell broke loose, and it just got worse and worse, it seemed like. But prior to that, six months prior to that, I had another dream. And in this dream, me and my wife were standing before two mountains. 
and they were surrounded by a lake, a crystal clear lake, and they were, was at the base of the mountains. They were actually on top of the lake, on top of this water. It was a circular, but the mountains were on fire, just burning, raging. There's two of them, one from one from one. I was in front of one and I was in front of one. I was like, Lord, why are we not you know, facing this together? I'll spare you the details because I may, 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 may bring them out later, may not. But it was something we both need to, some of them, some of the storms we're going through are together and some of them are, are separate, even though we're married. <clears throat> so, Jesus was on the other side of the mountain and he was motioning us, come on, come on through, just come on through, just come through. So my wife and I both started looking at Jesus because we could see him through the mountain, even though the mountain was mountain and it was rock and it was burning, and but we could see Jesus on the other side, motioning us, come on through. So we did, got to the lake and when I stepped in the lake, the water was cool, it wasn't cold, but it was cool and when I got to the mountain that was on fire, the cool, coolness of the water was cooling me to keep me from getting burned. And I remember the mountain was hard. The rock was kind of hard. It was really hard. It was on fire. But I just had to press through. When we got to the other side, Jesus was waiting on the other side for both me and my wife. And he had a robe, a white robe that was tailor fit for both of us that he put on, that he helped each of us put on. So, you know, that gave me some encouragement. And then this happened at 8-6 of 2019. And then the storm, and then the progression of the storm. So, you know, so I can say this with clarity, guys. There's a storm coming. I know with a surety because everything happened just the way Jesus told me in my life everything so it's coming get prepared guys but sometimes the storms come in life not for, for destruction but to clear the path so we can see exposes things cleans up things fresh start you know after fires or firestorms and different things <clears throat> New life comes forth. What was the day of Pentecost? A firestorm, guys. The wind. Purging. That's what that's what the storm was, was a fire on America. Look it up, guys. It's the storm coming to America. And then there's the storm getting rid of the idols of entertainment. Uh, there's going to be one about the idols of money. I don't know if I put that on there yet. That's why we call it the almighty dollar. It's not almighty guy. It's not cash is king. <clears throat> self is the biggest one though, guys. We've got to get rid of ourselves. Die out to ourselves. Except it's in John 8, 12, I believe. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Look at an acorn, guys. <clears throat> Hard shell, but brings forth a lot of life. All these storms, that's what they're going to do, guys. They're going to purge us of unnecessary sin. That's not a big common word nowadays in the church. Everybody's blessed, 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 blessed. You know, nobody wants to talk about the sin piece. <clears throat> Why? The devil doesn't want people to know about that because he didn't want to say, you just sit, be set free. Look at what I put on there. I'm going to end with this because I don't want this to be too long. Um, <clears throat> the message I put on there about he didn't want our best, he wants our worst. It was dark, dirty, ugly, dead, death places. The concrete bunkers we got buried under 45 feet of concrete, 18,000 locks, chains, locks we don't even have keys to. We won't even go there. Why does he want that? That's why I asked him, God, why do you want that? The, the, the ugly, dirty, smelly, sinful places. I won't even go. Because that's what's going to set you free. That's why it's not just come to the cross. It's go through the cross. So go through this storm, guys. <laughs> Head right into it. 
Whatever storms there are, you may already be in some. You may have already been through some. But it's coming, guys. To this land. Because it's going to be the Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people are called in my name, will humble themselves, turn, pray, humble themselves, seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, redirecting us, guys. That's what the storm is going to be. You're going to find out that all the stuff that you don't need is that, that you think is necessary. You may not need the wealth friends, the whatever, yourself, your self-made garbage, honestly. So nothing without Jesus. But anyhow, so just head into it. Makes no sense, maybe. Seems like safety's behind us like it was on that boat. Maybe. But what's God telling you to do? Head into the storm. When Jesus was in the boat and the storm, what were they doing in the midst of it? You know, he didn't care. He was asleep. Because he knew he had peace that passed all understanding. He just got up and calmed everything, you know. But could have did that one before he went to sleep. And then the storm was coming. So head into these storms, guys. Because there's safety. Jesus is waiting on the other side to put a robe on you. So, it's in Revelation too, 144,000. But anyhow, that's just, that one's free. So, love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon. Um, if you need to email me, just email me at Jesus is alive in America gmail.com blog you google us jesus is alive in america look us up put comments on here um talk to you soon guys